Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, RFK Refugees podcast. Ted here, John here. I almost said, I almost said the name of our own show. Our really? Old, you our old name to our old show. <laughs> I mean, almost, almost dropped it in there. Look, it's been it's been a couple of weeks since we've seen you all, and so it's been you know you get out of the rhythm. You have to get back into the rhythm, but I've jumped back in. Two feet off of it, off of uh, off off of the holiday, the Thanksgiving holiday. John, how you doing, my friend? I hope your holiday was good. I hope you had a, a good good time. Hope you got to relax a little bit. Though I'm not sure with a with a young child if that's possible. I you know relaxing is a is a <laughs> is a, it's a spectrum. I think when you have when you have a young kid, so I was relaxed. It was good. We got we had a we had good meals. I saw my family. It was good stuff. It was a uh, like everyone else or many other people. I have started a post Thanksgiving diet, and I immediately regret doing so. But this is what you do. You eat too much, and then you feel bad about it, and you punish <laughs> yourself. How about you, Ted? What did you do Same, for Thanksgiving? I, I, I went and saw family, um, went and saw friends over the weekend. I feel like it was a very – I was, like, bouncing around the entire state of Virginia. I went to uh, to Harrisonburg, uh, tried to avoid – I don't think I don't think Jamie football was playing, but I guess now they're bowl eligible, so no one's, no one's mad anymore, right? That's how that works. I think they're um, all good the, now. Yeah, and then I uh, went to Richmond, so I, I feel like I've, I've hit, like – sort of a triangle between the state and, and my home here right now in Lynchburg, if, if you've been unaware of my move um, and noticing that I have a different background and everything, which will be eventually when I find time, I will make it look nice and pretty. I promise by the season opener, it'll look nice for all of you. So you are you, so, are you in a new place in Lynchburg? Yeah, I've been there. I've been there for several, uh, several weeks, several, almost uh, several months now at this point. Jeez. No, no, I, but like, I know, but they had, oh, was no, the, same place, same place. I haven't okay. changed. I haven't changed. Got it. I just feel like some people, but some people just maybe still assume I live in in Rich in Richmond. There are some I people thought... out there that think that you're a Richmond Kickers fan, for example. They do. They, so... There's uh, quite a few of those. There's quite. A, I wonder how they got that impression. I can't imagine why that happened. Oh, anyway, our lovely fans uh, are the fans are the best. Yes, the are the we best. have some really so... amazing fans. We have we have some other people who um, we call them our fans, but we're we're being maybe a little sarcastic. Right. Anyway, they still listen. moving on. <laughs> A uh, couple things. One, I want to call attention first to this very, very cool T-shirt that I got from Bootleg MLS. There were there was a bit of a conversation going on about not wanting to pay big bad fanatics because they suck, which I uh, agree with because they're horrible. Uh, but you could I, I I don't know how long this will last. Basically, is what I'm telling you. This this guy, this account, Bootleg MLS on Twitter, is like sell, selling all these shirts. He is misspelling some names. I it's wonderful. This is a, like a this is like a real shirts out of the back of a truck situation, but for MLS and NWSL. Go check it out. Buy it before it gets shut down because it won't be long. Uh, there is a Santino Caranta shirt that I requested. I don't love the pictures he chose, so I'm not going to buy it. But I recommend you guys make it happen. Do it. I, yeah, that's that's I, the that's I. And if you go buy, tell them I sent you, and some maybe we'll get a coupon code, and maybe I'll get to maybe we'll get to choose the next <laughs> DC United iteration. And the other thing I want to do. I tell you, thanks to those of you who are on uh, on the old threads. We're growing. I think I have about doubled our follower total on threads to like 200 now. So woo, woo. we're only uh, one tenth of our amount on on Twitter. So we're it's a, it's a slow crawl. So if you're on that if you're on that platform, follow us there. Uh, make sure you're following us on Goals.tv. Check that out. That's a new platform that we're happy to be a part of. Uh, and we've started to post all of our video clips and the entire shows on also on YouTube. So if you're not a Twitch person, if you are if you're like a old, old, old millennial, you're like, I don't understand this Twitch business. YouTube, you understand that. Go check it out there. And then, of course, everywhere you can download audio, we're there. And then finally, this is my last plug or not my last plug, my last plug this week uh, for you to join the Patreon. If you join the Patreon at the five dollar level you would have got a episode on Friday that Ted talked about all the great things that went on over the course of the week before we had a show. So uh, we, Ted and I alternate. If we have more exclusive content, it will go there only to Patreon. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's a small but mighty crew and they're very loyal and they've been there for a long time. So if you're listening and I know you guys are, thank you. And if you want to join that group, patreon.com slash RFK refugees. Yes. And, and the exclusive content, uh, that we, nothing, nothing we can announce presently, but we're we're working uh, on a certain on a, trying to get a certain figure on the show. So if you that want to hear be a first, time gated, they'll be yeah, they'll be here at first. <laughs> <laughs> so be 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 aware uh, and uh, join the Patreon because you get to support our show and we really do thank everybody who comes in and supports the show. 
helps helps us on helps us out and helps grow the show and pay for a lot of the stuff that's helped made the show great um John, let's did, jump right into it. Yeah, and, did you uh, watch any soccer this weekend? Uh, other than obviously MLS uh, playoffs, what, which we'll talk about. Did you watch any uh, across the pond soccer by any chance? A, l- a little bit. I did. I checked out, of course, Liverpool. I'm, I'm, if you don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a Liverpool fan, so I watched Liverpool Man City one uh, one draw there. So decent, decent result. Uh, Brentford could not hold it against Arsenal, unfortunately. Um, I've been watching some of the. It looks like you know uh, Everton's about ready to to make, make the drop after a ten point they deduction. Are really, man. <laughs> um, to be fair, I, I I do the I, I'm not we're not getting the particulars because as I said on Threads, this is not a premier Premier League show, but it is wild that they are the, they are the team that gets punished for spending over their means. Uh, I think they just didn't. They, I think it's like when. Uh, a rich but not very rich person gets audited because they didn't have enough money to hire the good accountant. Like I think, I think that's what this is likely is. So unfortunate for them and for their fans. Maybe they'll still make it out. I think probably not. I think that'll. I think that'll probably tank them. But did you see the uh, Garnacho goal? The Man United yeah. spike. That was pretty silly. And then I was laughing, thinking I was on looking at Twitter today, and it was saying that Benteke must have feel like the forgotten man because he scored basically an identical. Uh, bike against Man U at Old Trafford <laughs> from the same spot. It went to the same part of the net. Uh, so yeah, don't forget, don't forget the Crystal Palace legend slash what, he played Liverpool. Where else did he play? Was it just Liverpool, those two in been, England? Uh, he's played a little bit in Belgium too. Aston I think Villa? he is. Uh, I'm trying to remember where. I have to go back and look at his look at his stats. I, I think know he played. He's, last place. he's he's played in Belgium. I know that much. Um, so uh, Crystal Palace was where he came from. He was at Crystal Palace. And then he came here. So, um, but yeah, no, fantastic goal from him. Probably going to win goal of the year at this point. Um, and I think the comparisons were to Wayne Rooney as well for his uh, his bicycle his shin goal. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, some uh, some so we got club soccer's back. Thank goodness. Uh, last week was international soccer. Um, I, I'm not, we're not going to talk about the U.S. men's national team. There are plenty of other podcasts that do it better. Some of them do it worse. Um, all I will say <laughs> is. Everybody, again, what I say with the U.S. men's national team is please just take a breath and relax. Never. Relax, breathe in. Kevin Prates, though, uh, got ninety, got a start, didn't look so hot. Um, I, what do you – like, so I, I said online, I was like – I said online about this. and So I said we weren't going to talk about national Yeah, team, and here we DC, go. Here we but go. It's DC, but it's D.C. focused. Sure. What, I, can you help me understand? Do you have any understanding as to why – like when, when, when Kevin was here, he played wing back, and mm-hmm. he was excellent. When he played winger, he was never really that effective. I am like struggling to understand why he got to Europe by playing the right wing back position and and the skills he showed there to track back and defend. And I saw a little bit actually in the in the first Trinidad game. I think there was he lost possession, tracked back, won the ball, got the team back under back on the pressure. What it was going on and why is it that I think personally he if he plays at wing back, he will be his potential is to be elite. If he plays that winger, I think he's just going to get kind of lost, like in the shuffle. I'm, I'm not understanding what's going on there. Do you have any? <laughs> I don't do you know anything, I, but <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I think. It, I think it could just. I think it could just be maybe in, maybe in training. He, maybe he. Then maybe that's what he's saying, and that's what his coaches want him to do. I don't know. To your point, uh, there, there's a, your competence and what you want to do, and taking on players from the wing may not be it for him. And it was somebody who was saying like. Uh, Kevin Paredes could not dribble past players who are at USL championship level uh, or playing in the domestic Trinidad and Tobago league. Uh, so that's not good. That's not really what you want to see. So. Yeah, no, because that's not because that he that's never been his skill set. He's never been a guy who can he can take guys on the dribble when running at full speed. And he beats players with pace and speed and just, you know, and, and you get that more from wing back because you are not forced into sort of tight, slow situations. You're kind of maybe running, you're pushing up on sort of like an off, uh, you know, where you've got like attackers on a counter attack that are moving quickly and you're running and you're trying to join that attack. Uh, and I think that's where you've seen him be the most effective. It's it's what made him, it's what got him to Wolfsburg. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really not understanding the, the, the thought process by certain coaches in where he's uh, in where he's currently playing right now. So anyway, who knows? That, that's enough. That's enough. Uh, that's enough. U.S. men's talk. We, we we've met our quota for the year. I think on that. Yep. Um, let's talk about the big news. I think all the D.C. fans want to want to hear about. Uh, we finally, 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 finally have announced a new GM. 
Ali, Ma, I think it's Makai, I believe is what it is, right? Am I right about that? We've not heard it said anywhere yet. Or <laughs> I, talk to him. I tried. I'm pretty sure it's Ali Makai. I'm a, I'm I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna. I already go with... made a minor threat Ian McKay joke, uh, which no one got. I think two people got on uh, on Discord, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna make yeah. it a lot. There'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of Fugazi jokes. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll, we'll get it right sometime by the time the season starts. We'll guarantee that. Maybe if we talk to him, we might get it right. Who knows? You have a three year deal in the notes. I thought I saw it was a four year deal. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but otherwise, it's, multiple. It's either a three or a four year deal. <laughs> yeah, uh, most, I think it might be four. You might bring. Yeah, so he spends. He has spent five years uh, as an assistant GM in Nashville, uh, and he has also uh, Nashville's made the playoffs every year. What are our so? Okay, let's let's bury. We had essentially three candidates that we were that we were looking at. We were looking at um, looking at Tall. We were looking at Mar- Maria uh, Tall from. Um, Columbus and Maria from uh, from Orlando, and then obviously Ali, who we've hired, and an unnamed international candidate. Unnamed international candidate, but I think that was just let's let's keep let's get the let's, let's Ravel look at Morrison the... was the player the guy that we were talking to because we already had a contract. Like, might as well let, make him work. Yeah, let's like I think that was more just like hey, let's see let's see what's what else might be out there. Let's not limit ourselves just to MLS. Um, obviously the hire, I think we were all kind of wondering what was taking so long. Tom Bogart posting about what was taking so long. We, we had all thought that Ali was out of the running when Nashville lost. And we thought, well, we had, there hasn't been an announcement yet. So it must not be him. This may be, I think of, of the three choices, I think this maybe was maybe not the number one choice. I think we had heard a lot of good things about tall. I think we had heard a lot of good things about all three of these guys. Uh, we were that, going that, after Marrera really hard yeah. in Orlando and asked numerous times and got rebuffed numerous times. I think he was the number one candidate. I think he was who they, who they wanted the most. Yeah, I think it was. And I think it's 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 clear how much they chased him and how they were rebuffed. And then they said, well, we'll speak to him again. They were very clearly looking at him. I think Tall Tall had heard a lot of good things from I think Tom Bogart, especially and his sources that said he was an ex- exceptionally brilliant person. We'll never know what the the reason was for there. This does if we talk about this team and you know what they spend money on and everything like that. You're getting a a 37 year old, one, youngest GM I believe. I know he's one of the youngest, if not the youngest GM. I'm not sure an MLS youngest GM in MLS history, but certainly up there uh, as far as age makes me feel um, weird that somebody who is literally five years older, who I could have like been in high school with, uh, yeah, that's is weirder now than the guy being younger than you. Ted. That's <laughs> way that's a way fair, weirder of the version. Fair of these. point. Fair point. So we're all feeling we're all feeling a little Everyone's odd about weird. it. Yeah, but uh, young guy, I I can't imagine, and and that's what makes me lead to believe. And this is nothing to say that I don't think he'll be successful, or that I don't think he can be successful. This leads me to believe that the team still maybe weren't willing maybe to break the bank for other guys who maybe had a little more experience, who had a little more, um, had maybe a little more uh, chasing them. Mar- Mar- Maria, I believe, has been uh, targeted. I believe he came up in the uh, search for, I think, uh, New England. They When they were looking for a GM before, I think they're going to settle. Uh, they're going to settle for uh, Kurt Anolfo, um, is what I believe the reports have said. So That is... Definition of settling, I think, is a good. He he's good at LA Galaxy too. He was good at building a USL version of a uh, of a team. But <laughs> I don't want we'll him to be good, so that's fine. I'm glad that's the case. He was also a former go- agent, which I think is going to be beneficial. We mm-hmm. talked a couple episodes ago about uh, something Pablo said about what DC is known for: it's underpaying their front office, overvaluing their own players, and overpaying for other teams' players. So having an agent, although it's a while ago, right? He's been out of the game for five years, but he's been in the front office dealing with agents. Uh, so hopefully that he can have a little bit, you know, his, maybe that that point of view will be helpful. Dave Casper has not been an agent ever. Uh, so being on the other side of the table for a little while might be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I will say, I think a lot of conjecture, there's been a lot of like comparisons about, you know, how Nashville looks and, what they've done and like trying to like apply that to Ali. I, I will say, I think that's a little, I think that's a little unfair. Um, it, what, what we do know about him is that he was apparently instrumental in, in bringing in two players, one of which is Hani Mukhtar, who has been a runaway success at Nashville. One of the better, one of the best number tens that come has come into the league. Uh, there has been one of their only, only real big international signings that has done well. And Walker Zimmerman, they also brought in, who's been successful. Again, MLS player, uh, longstanding MLS player, longstanding MLS player right there. 
So I, I think based on that, you know, those are the kind of the, the resume ticks as far as that goes. We don't know how he's going to handle. I mean, Nashville, I don't believe really had that much of an academy. They were pretty active in in going in the draft and, and grabbing outside players. Again, they also didn't have a whole lot of time. It takes time to build up that infrastructure. Coming here, he's going to have that infrastructure. He's going to have that youth academy, that that youth director, that coach, and already a huge sloth of, of young players uh, that with a lot of potential and a lot of talent. So that's going to be a difference he's going to be walking into. Um, we had a we had a question from uh, a a listener from uh, uh, Brandon Cartwright says, uh, "Is there anyone from Nashville's roster that Ali Mackay might be looking to bring to DC?" Alex uh, Muiel uh, keeps coming to mind. Uh, I think he should bring uh, a guy named Hanny Mukhtar. I think that would be a good idea. Come to DC United, that would be a player <laughs> to recommend. Uh, I'll, I was looking at the roster quickly. Uh, former DC United legend Dax McCarty also on the roster, and also Joe Willis. So opportunities for uh, for for come home for both of those players. I, I'd be curious to know what the contract if if we know the contract situation of some of those guys. I I would love to have Joe Willis back here and go. I think he'd be fantastic. Uh, Dax McCarty, uh, too Goodbye, a little bit on no, the, yeah, the, the, the on the older side. I think Alex Mule would kind of would kind of fall under there as well. I, you know, I think uh, we talk about this team having one designated player spot open. Uh, so that's something he's going to get right away or potentially two designated player spots open. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. I think there's a lot of directions he could take this team. Um, I think he could say, you know, I, I think we will know, yes, he's under a three to four year contract. How safe is that job? Is he going to get that full time to, you know, to build what he wants uh, and I think maybe I think maybe we'll see that with what does the roster look like heading into this year? Is it going to be a complete tear down, tear down and rebuild, or is he going to say, "Look, we've got one more year of Benteke, one more year of Click. Let's you know, let me finish the build while also maybe trying to see if we can set some things up for next year. You know, go out and get some big time players. Uh, and you know, also I think wonder how that's going to be changed. Uh, the rumors circulating that you know the MLS Board of Governors are voting on a potentially a fourth designated player, as well as I've heard an increase to the salary cap, which you know it is significant. And I think you have to increase that salary cap if you're going to add a fourth DP because you've got to figure out five hundred thousand dollars extra of, of roster space. So you have to at least increase it by that. Um, so. There's going to be a lot of room for him to to maneuver the roster. You know, we're still waiting to see if uh, if uh, uh, Pereira, yeah, why did I know that? Um, if he's going to be signed or he's going to return to the team. So, um, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting to watch uh, what sort of develops over the next few weeks. And then also, who's he going to hire as a coach? Uh, you know, is he going to bring in a Hugo Perez? Is he going to bring in? There's a lot of coaches that are that are out there. Uh, I guess go ahead. Give me your who, who do your give me your dream scenario. Who who do you want him to hire as coach? Uh, I want Oscar other than uh, I was gonna darn I was gonna drop in other than other than Oscar Pereira because no, then we all love us. <laughs> that's that's the one I want. He's out of not, contract with he's out of contract with Orlando right now. So yep, you know, Bruce Arena obviously is now shopping his wares under Charlotte. So I think that 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 circus has left town as far as a potential option. I don't think that's really on anymore. If it ever was, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think Pereja is the only name that really excites me of 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 available names. I think um, has Savarese been has he found a, has he found a club yet after Portland? I don't I don't believe so. He'd I be a name. He was He'd definitely be a being he was being talked about from other clubs as being a maybe. I mean, he's kind of a retread from a MLS perspective. Um, uh, Adrian Heath. Is he's he doesn't have a job yet, does he? Yeah, I do not want to. I do not. I don't want necessarily want to. I'm just saying, looking at who's around, there aren't a lot of there aren't a lot of in, in, you know exciting names. Uh, Ezra Hendrickson, not really exciting based on his performance. Granted, he was with Chicago, but DC's not I, much better. So <laughs> I really like. want a, an underrated name that I think that if we're talking about maybe a realistic name that would actually get me excited. Or, I don't want to say realistic. I think there's a chance I could go get Oscar Perea. I think Oscar Perea would want to fetch a pretty penny. So you're looking at re- looking at realistic options. I think Robin Frazier would be one that I think would excite me. Uh, a coach that has shown he can be success, have success with rosters that you know are maybe not up to par. Maybe this is an opportunity for him. He's going to get a, a GM that's going to have 
you know, says and decisions into the roster. He's got a great, you know, youth academy that he can sort of pull from. And a top 10 salary, a top 10 spending team in the league. So (laughs) top five is in third league. And and he'd be a guy, I think he would, he's a guy when he was let go, there were a lot of teams out there that were like, we'll take him. Absolutely. Um, I think he's, he, he is a coach that I think has, has grown a lot of respect, but just has not gotten, gotten the opportunities uh like you know a phil neville who just kind of fell up right into portland so would you rather want to have phil neville or adrian heath adrian heath probably that's the correct uh, answer i was just not sure how much your heath hate had poisoned your brain and not enough apparently <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i yeah no i yeah but who knows right. uh, a lot of a lot of bad coaches off the table thankfully colorado going out and getting chris armis so he's off the thank table. you so there's just there's gracias several- so I look forward Several to coaches. I look forward to uh, relieving Colorado of its coach sometime during the season, if we play them. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, let's talk. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Any other sort of? No, let's get to the announced. teams that are actually good and still playing. I think that's yeah, exciting. The teams that are actually good and still playing. We had MLS playoffs that finally returned this week. The semifinals. We we saw the return of the one match, the one match knockout rounds. I will say the matches themselves way more cagier than what we saw out of the three matches. Like it's what you, it's what you, you got what you wanted folks. This is what happens in one offs. <laughs> this is think about all the cup finals you've seen that have sucked. Like you're going to get, you're going to get intense emotion. You're going to get very, very, you know, tight refereeing decisions, tight, everything. Uh, and people being mad. That's what's going to happen in these games. And then you got them. And I, I would say that all of the games were, uh, like B minus for game quality and like, you know, a for tension for all. Mm-hmm. So it depends on what you want. That's what we got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I it's... have written down. Th- I like the, the, the way we should look at this as DC United fans, because our influence grows <laughs> everywhere is you have Ben Olsen in Houston in the semifinal against LAFC. We don't care about LFC. That's a non, a non factor from a DC United perspective. We don't care. Uh, the only, I think DC United connection that ever existed uh, was Dan Yakovich played for their inaugural team. Other than that, no factor. Uh, against MVP Lucho Acosta. Andy and Nahar Marino. Erasure, my friend, by the way. Did Andy he, Nahar, did he yeah. play, though? I think it, I, he was on the roster. I think he, I just, I think he just practiced, and I'm not going to count that. Okay. Interrupting my Fair Cincinnati enough. love, MVP Lucho, Junior Moreno, onto the semis against Columbus and Julian Gressel, who apparently is in the doghouse and did not feature... He's, Got a, lot, a little five minutes at the end of the game. I mean, it's a case of him is that I think there's just a, they, they have a right back that has emerged and I, I don't know his name, but he's been very, very good. Um, you know, Def- I, defensive, probably maybe a little bit better defensively as well. Maybe in a one off game. Maybe I, I think that's a guy, you know, if you're DC, maybe uh, you just kind of re- you alley, maybe you reach out and say, you know, new boss, you wanna, different. You wanna, different <laughs> we have a change. Everyone here, everyone that change. you hate is gone. Changing it. I would love to have Julian Julian Gressel back on this team. Um, let's talk about the let's talk about the games. Um, let's uh, talk. Uh, so uh, Houston, uh, Houston, of course, one nothing winners over over Sporting Kansas City. Controversy on the line. Uh, apparent handball call that wasn't called. I have I have made my statement. I have made my statement that says that I think that that was the correct call. I, I don't know if it was the correct call. I don't think that was a call that VAR should be overturning with kind of how close it was. Uh, Christina uncle has disagreed and she was on morning footy the other day saying, Nope, that should have been reviewed back for PK. And she is a uh, much, much better referee than I am. So maybe she's right, but controversial moment there. Um, and then uh, you also had, of course uh, the Columbus game, like we said, uh, Columbus very much, uh, I think kind of dominating that game. Orlando sort of unable to find, unable to find the back of the net, and then we have a, a goal. Orlando's pushing up. Uh, Galeses is like trying to play the ball, and then falls to Cucho, who hits the ball from half field in the back of the net. Two nothing game over. All the games were either one nothing or there was the two not the one little two nothing game. So, like I said, not a lot of goals scored. Uh, then there was, of course, the other sort of controversially ref game, which was of course Philly versus Cincy. Uh, appeared to be offside based on the camera angle. Remember folks, camera angles lie. Uh, camera angles struggle with a thing called the third dimension and actually being in line. So I think there's been enough analysis of that to say, yes, he might've been offside. My argument, my argument with that offside call is, isn't this kind of, this is like what we want. 
this is like what we want out of the air, right? We, we complain so much, so much about the Premier League and like the slight toe that's like offside or, or everything else. This yep. is, in my opinion, what VAR should be. VAR yep. should be a video assistant referee, not a video referee. So I really don't know what like what people like people being upset about. It. It's like you guys are just never going to be happy. It's never going to happen. You guys are never going to be satisfied with anything. I think it's the same thing with the with the KC goal too. It's like they're watching this like slow motion replay of the ball like hit close to his hand, his chest, his arm moves, and I'm just like, you guys have. I have seen people complain for months about red card situations where they talk about this game is not supposed to be played in slow motion. I'm like, well, here's you're here you're using a slow motion play to get a call that you think is right. I mean, it's like. You cannot have your cake and eat it too, soccer fan base. So anyway, and then there was Ted Uncle in the in the L.A. Seattle game. I don't think he was great. I don't think he cost Seattle the game. I think Seattle did that themselves. Uh, when you dominate play the way they did against LAFC and you're only able to generate like 1.24 XG, there's a problem that you're just hitting hopeful balls or hopeful shots from way far out. They were unable to get any sort of penetration inside the box, so. Yeah, that's my quick 90 second review. I don't know, John, you got any thoughts on the playoffs? I have 90 second, maybe, maybe, but no, I I give Ted all of, I give Ted all of my time for refereeing and uh, decisions. I, uh, I don't have a lot of opinions. Uh, yeah, so let's get on to I basically I broke down sort of the the components of the playoffs that exist and how they have done this year that are that are relevant to these United fans. I think we have if you've been on social media the last couple of days, I think everyone is. You know, we talked about this last year and over the course of this year, like there has been a dramatic reappraisal of some of these players mm-hmm. that have gotten the, the stink of DC United off of them by going somewhere else and doing well. And people are feeling differently about them, which I think is great. Uh, Lucho, as I mentioned today, won the MVP, uh, crushed the, the media vote, I think 75%. Uh, player vote was like 55%. Just to wrap up on his numbers for the year, I mean, MVP ass numbers 17 goals, 12 assists. 32 starts, uh, one goal and two more assists in cup play. Not that this matters, but his average score on foot mob was 7.85. Uh, and I said Denny Boanga scored 20 goals and, and didn't come close, didn't come close to touching it. Uh, so well deserved. A player that, you know, if you were to say, could you fit a Lucho Acosta back into your team at DC United and he could be useful? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you sure Absolutely. I think you should I think you sure could. And he'd be the first name in the team sheet. Uh, you certainly could. To a lesser extent, but also kind of surprising, Junior Moreno, four goals this year. If you remember Junior Moreno, not a threat to score for DC United, often a threat to hit the ball 50 rows up behind the goal. That's more what he was going to do. Uh, two assists, again, it's kind of surprising, in 29 matches, average foot mob of 7.16. Uh, could you see him valuable next to a Russell Canals? Or, you know, I think you certainly could. I think you certainly could see that. Uh, and then lastly, Julian Gressel, I think, had the least productive of the of the former DC United player. Uh, to not say that he was bad, there is going to be there's a particular person that hates Julian Gressel in the DC United fan environment. Uh, he had four goals, two assists in 29 matches, seven point. Or, I'm sorry, uh, four goals, six assists in 29 matches, seven point four average, and then last started in November seventh. Um, I still think, to your point, if you could get him in free agency. For a reasonable number, reasonable number being the challenge here, I think. Uh, I don't know necessarily know that his performance in the last two years has warrants DP. I think probably a TAM deal again mm-hmm. probably makes sense to me. But these are all players that DC United did either did not want or let go. Ben Olsen, obviously that's a that's a name that doesn't have a, a, a stats next to him, but Houston has com- become a completely different team. When he took the team over, by the way, read your Stephen Goff uh, piece on him this week. Great piece. And uh, talk to to, <clears throat> to Ben at length. Uh, but basically said that this was a blank slate. There was so much roster turnover that he and Pat Onstat got to build a roster from scratch. And in one season, similar to uh, the way Washington Spirit had been described as a, as a work in progress and we're not there yet. Ben Olsen had been saying that about this team all year long. And they find themselves in the semi. They find themselves open cup champions. It's kind of a kind of a wild story. They have a chance, like a chance at a cup double. They're going to be in Champions League next year. Like, talk about like just the the over over overproducing expectations, like over overachieving. 
I mean, this team was not expected to be here. Uh, he- cut, no one talks into- about Houston Dynamo in the off season at the at, at the preseason, uh, like rankings and 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 guesses on how the season were going. No one was talking about Houston, and everyone was mad that Ben Olsen got hired. Like all the Houston fans, were like trash. What is happening? And it, it really, to, to me, it shows. It really shows when I talk about players. You know, I talk about certain players that have been bad. We talk about these players. Some of these players who maybe we had criticisms of, and certainly coaches. You get people in the right environment and in good environments, and and they can outperform uh, with what you expect. There have been plenty of players that get in good environments, go to bad environments, and then they go back to a good environment. They become great, and people are like, "What happened? Where did this play?" He's like, "Well, it's already, it's always been there. It's just been." He's been in bad environments and we've seen time and time. And this is really what I think Ali needs to solve this year is to get somewhere where we can, where we can create a good environment that we can start seeing players that we know are good and we know can perform well. Absolutely. I think that's, so, a, I think that's a good way to look at it. Uh, a couple of news and notes on decent, currently contracted DC United players. Uh, Jose Fajardo is apparently a, one of the, he's like a, uh, he's an Edison Flores and that he rules playing for his national team. And then he turns into a scarecrow when he plays for DC United. Uh, has scored two goals for Panama in two games against Costa Rica. Each game playing just the first 45 minutes and getting subbed at halftime, which is a peculiar setup for your goal score, but maybe he's on minutes restriction or something. Who knows? Uh, more interestingly, Andy Nahar, who, again, currently contracted with DC United, uh, played 90 minutes in the first in a 2 nothing win over Mexico, which was a bit of a shock result. And then he played 120 minutes and missed the final penalty in the two nothing loss to, to Mexico. That put Mexico through what tournament does that put them through? Uh, that puts them through to the Copa America. So that's a, it was the Nations Which is League. A good tournament you'd want to be in. That would be that would have been. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of uh, anyway. Um, so I, I wanted to spotlight. I got some quotes. I was digging around in Spanish language media uh, about our, some of our players. Yeah. So this is the quote from Andy Nahar. Nahar also mentioned the team's upcoming plans for the Copa America and his personal plans for well-deserved vacations. Despite rumors about a potential move to Olympia, Nahar maintained that his current priority is preparing for the team's future matches and taking a break off at the end of the year. That says, your agent talked to you and said, stop telling people in interviews that you are going to leave DC United. You don't get to control that. They have an option. Stop doing that. Yeah. I, think that's what, <laughs> I think that's what that was. Good. Yeah. And I, and I think it's also him being like, look, man, I mean, y- you... You might, we might be able to get you a good contract elsewhere. We might not be able to. I'm not sure. Sure, we're not going to, to get that for you. This might be the option deal for DC. Might be a good option, and you're not helping yourself by, by saying like by saying what you're saying right now. So, uh, by the way, I feel so bad for for Andy because he uh, he missed the penalty, um, a wild penalty shootout in the game against Mexico, where they 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 have not qualified for the Copa America. They will get an opportunity to. They go to the. Uh, to a play-in game, play-in series to get into the Copa America. Is it against Canada? Uh, it's either uh, to go back and look. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think Canada has. I feel like Canada has. They have a uh, shot. I know that when mm-hmm. Jamaica took the spot, they're going to play the U.S. next. But I, I know that. Anyway, um, yeah. The other thing about what was I going to say? Andy Nahar also said in that interview, uh, "My injuries are a thing of the past. That's I'm behind that. I'm over that now. Uh, see, I just did 120 minutes and I feel great. I was like." Okay. Well, I hope so, Andy. For yeah. all of our sakes, I hope I hope that's the case. Uh, and then this one's kind of a funny little one. Uh, Martin Rodriguez, uh, you maybe hardly knew him, uh, did not play at all this year <laughs> due to an ACL tear. Uh, was talking to all these guys go home to their home countries, and they're like, "I am I'm about to start some stuff, and no one's going to know about it in Washington because no one's going to read this." Wrong. Wrong. Uh, it says, I have a one-year contract. In football, many things happen, but I'm open. Obviously, my heart is there. Colo, colo, always. Uh, but he, the funny thing is he was there in a seven-on-seven tournament, <laughs> like, a, like a street ball tournament. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 don't, I think, honestly, the headline was a lot more like, he's coming back. He hates DC. Uh, the actual quote was, was pretty benign there. So I, I think... I hope he has a great year, and I hope they want him back. I hope he I hope he has a bounce back, and that's what happens. Uh, he he would be a guy. He would be a guy if he's back. I'm thinking, okay, they think there's some there's some juice in this roster, and you know maybe they want to take a year to evaluate certain players that maybe they don't think have gotten a fair shot under a new coach, and then you know they'll see we'll see what the next year brings us and how the team does. If he's gone, that means I'm trending towards the idea that this is like a complete. A complete retool and rebuild. I could see them. I'm okay with that, to be honest with you. As we've said before, that'd be fine yeah. with me. Yeah. I, I 
I I will I love Martin. I'm sure he will be successful. You know, if he goes back to to Chile, he I better not team- get injured in this goofy seven on seven tournament. <laughs> if he does, that's it. I think the team is going to be like, uh, we're gonna we're gonna mutually uh, mutually agree to terminate this contract, and you can go elsewhere, or we're we'll, we're gonna buy you out. Whatever it is, we're not going to register you. You're not going to count. You're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. They've got a lot of. They've got a, in the drafts. <laughs> in the drafts, they've got a lot of mutually agreed to terminate contract. Uh, they're, ready, they're ready to. They're ready to copy paste that from previous usages if, if need be. We'll see. Uh, that's coming up December second. I have said it was the twenty second. I was wrong. The twenty second was contract offer. So we assume they have offered a contract to Donovan Pines. Oh man, our countdown was in was inaccurate. This it whole was time. inaccurate. We, I think, but I think that's how we got the the GM announcement. I'm yeah. I'm saying it's because of us. No one else is putting the pressure on the team. I think yeah, it was just, we were putting the screws to him. December second, so I think I'm coming. I believe it. And let me make let me make sure I get this right before I before I say it. <laughs> another wrong set of time. another countdown that's incorrect. <laughs> but well, uh, you're look. Well, you look at that. Go ahead. You can yeah. Well, you look yeah. at that. Just a quick note: Griffin Yao scores for Westerlo in Belgium. It was an equalizer in extra time, which you would have thought would have got him a draw, but they gave up on their goal. Uh, great goal if you have a chance to see it. I know we, t- we posted it on Twitter and probably on Threads, maybe not. Uh, but it was a, it was you know not a cheapy, not a tip in. Uh, ran down the right side and uh, and blasted it far post on the run. So good for him. Yeah. By the way, uh, December first is the so this Friday official. That'll be the contract that that'll be that'll be a moment to watch where we're going to find out on a lot of these guys. We're assuming there's a, a contract. Uh, there's a contract extension offer coming for like take to Pietro. We hope we see that. Um, that would be very strange if there was. That would make things go sour. That would make things go sour very quickly if that happened. Uh, and we'll find out about any Nahar and maybe some of these other players. I don't know if we'll find out. I mean, he still has one more year. There's no option on the another year on on Martin Rodriguez's contract, but um, I, I think yeah. if he, I think if he has an offer from Colo Colo and it's on the table, but it's inducive on him not being in contract at DC, I'm pretty sure DC will be like, "That's fine, you can you can go." We'll well, they paid a million dollars for him, didn't they? I think so. So <laughs> our team, our team, not unless your name is Wayne Rooney, we tend to honor our contracts on our side. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. We'll see. We uh, we, we've got a uh, we've got one question here. From Todd Dodge, and it's on from Facebook. That's a place that you can do that. We uh, we do post on Facebook. Uh, your mom can your mom can ask us questions. Whoever is on Facebook, I'm on it more now. But anyway, uh, said would Ben Olsen ever come back to coach DC United, and would we want it? I thought about this a little bit. I've been thinking about this lately. Uh, would he ever come back? I think he yeah. would. I think he certainly would. And, and I think he goes and coaches a decade uh, at Houston and maybe somewhere else, and then wants to like you know. He's still young. He's like a little bit older than I am. Like he's got plenty of time to coach if he wants to keep coaching. And the bug has clearly bit him again. He's mm-hmm. having fun. Uh, would we want it? I think we would be stupid not to. Mm-hmm. I think he's a Bruce Arena coming back without the baggage of what Bruce Arena coming back means. Um, so if this club is in a, I, I would like him to come back to a completely different club, basically, than the one he left. A, a club with a, a defined culture, with all the things that we don't like about it fixed that he can just come in and be him. And, and you know, in the, again, read that Steve Goff interview in the Washington Post. He was talking about, like, I was unprepared tactically. I did not have I did not have it, and I could not get it necessarily while I was coaching, and I never really felt caught up, basically is what he said. And now I had the time off, and I feel like I'm I'm there. I'm that, I'm that guy now. So, yeah, I think we'd want it back. I, please. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sign me up. He's talked about in the article how much he loved DC, how much he loved living in DC, and you know I think he he's happy in Houston right now. I think he's certainly enjoying it right now. But I, I think if if things if he does if things were to go south in Houston, or you know things were not to were not to go as well, or he were to decide he wants to leave and he's a free agent, and you know DC has has an opening at coach, I think you would be stupid not to try to reach out and try to bring him back. So he made a comment that I thought was interesting. He said that it's nice to have people look at you without. 20 years of your record on your back, which I think is true, but he'll also notice that if things to your point turn bad in Houston, you don't have those 20 years on your back. You are easily fired. Yeah. <laughs> whereas, whereas in DC you had, a, you had that equity uh, built up and made it a lot harder to get rid of you. So. And you, you know, you gotta, you gotta almost think about, you know, I wonder if this is thought like he's almost, he's blown away expectations if this doesn't end in a MLS cup championship and they fall short, then the pre- the pressure is on now. There, there was no pressure, no pressure at all for this team. 
in in twenty in uh in twenty twenty three. No one had any expectations, and and that's going to change if if things start to if things go south next season or you know after after this year, uh, because there there's clearly a lot of expectations on him. And last bit of quasi news: twenty twenty three MLS tops set is out this week so go get that uh if you're if you're the five people that collect soccer cards i know there's at least one or a couple listeners of ours uh last season there was there was a there's a set called finest there was only one dc united player in it and it was kevin Paredes. this year uh i saw so the checklist says basically it's akambone uh ted kudibiatro a couple cards of him uh benteke no click uh and then i think christian fletcher and that's mm. it. I mean, maybe a burn bomb too. I'm not, I'm not really sure. But they, like, because there's so many teams and players, they can't conceivably do a set that has everybody. Whereas they used to be able to do that like a long time ago when there was a lot less teams they could do that. Now it's like, we're not going to have a 1200 card set. That's not happening. Uh, so get your DC United cards if you want them. But uh, Matias Click, by the way, starring in a Thanksgiving uh, DC video. I think he's a guy who I, I, I think maybe I had some questions as to whether he'd be back next year. I think he'll be back next year. I think based on the too. based on some of that, so sounds like he likes living in DC, which is good. Uh, uh, not this, not necessarily the case for all of our pri- prior uh, DC United designated players. <laughs> Certainly the case. A uh, little bit of we don't have much Washington Spirit news. Uh, we'll lead off with one where <laughs> I was talking to Ted before the show started, just trying to find some Spirit news, and this thing was everywhere that we were looking. I think just because of who we follow, but. Uh, there are unconfirmed reports that the Spirit let go uh, a number of sort of community relations staff, the staff that dealt with uh, supporters groups, uh, dealt with sort of like face, like, you know, supporter facing players, uh, let them go over the holidays. I don't, we don't have anything, we don't have any confirmation of that. We don't know anything, anything, but uh, not really what you'd like to see. There have been a number of firings over the last few years under Michelle Kang uh that made some people scratch their heads this is not a team that doesn't have money uh if you look at their hiring right now they're hiring like a million data analysts and every other position you could think of in the world uh but I, there's a there seems to be a very short leash on you know i know last year the pa announcer got let go mm-hmm. uh there's a short st- the ticket office i think there's an expectation that this team should be in a different place than it is from a sales perspective uh, just because I don't know, because they've got stars on the roster. Uh, but I think it's, you know, it, they're, they're building up more than maybe they think they are. They're, they're coming from a lower point than they think they are, even though they won, even though they got these names, it's a tough market. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's going on. Yeah. I we don't think, have much to say about that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's concerning. I think there's been a lot of things, this team, we talk about the investment, all the story, the positive stories that have come out and you've, you know, you're now on your third coach in the last three seasons. Yes. One of those came with the championship, but to one historically bad season and another very disappointing season. And I think Four so coaches, quite- if you count the interim coach, that's now the head coach at Bay FC. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which you can't really, but you kind of can. Yeah, uh, so I mean, it's been, it's a concerning, I would say, that there because that staff, you know, getting rid of that staff, you get rid of those people that are very forward facing, and if they're replaced by people who are not as good or who who don't have or you're trying to crunch staff, uh, that's going to be noticed, and it it was noticed at DC when those some of those people left that suddenly the friendliness of the of the fan base was not. Uh, was not really there and and it really led to sort of a severing of that and it took dc had built up a lot of that trust and a lot of that relationship over many many years and it took a very long time to break that down and it finally did break down i my concern with the spirit would be you've got maybe you've got a much smaller group of core people in there who who are who are dedicated who will probably stay through it for a while but you have far fewer of those and the you're going to lose a lot more people and potentially lose some ground so I don't know. It's 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 something to watch. It's you know the team I think has to go out and you're successful on the field. No one cares. So and so they, and, yeah. and they were almost in the playoffs this year, but didn't didn't quite make it. So an uneven year for sure. Uneven year. Uh, I have some very fringe notes here. Jordan Thompson, a player that most people maybe not remember because she has not played uh, for the Spear yet. She had an ACL injury and didn't get to play. Uh, is on loan to Sydney FC and scored a nice goal. So she's a player that I, is now healthy, clearly, and should be in 
uh, in consideration in preseason. So we'll see. For forward depth is important, and I think also, you know, fans continue, and you know, you know, pontificators continue to think Ashley Hatch is for the off to Utah uh, because she went to school there, because she's from there. Um, I, you know, it's it's an open question. No one's hinted either way from from either clubs. I think if she were a uh, part of a package in maybe like the, the expansion draft protection, like maybe you give her up for protection and a first round draft pick. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's something you think about. I, she's still on, she's still on ex, an extension. There is no player that's going to, that has her, we have no backup for her. Uh, unless you think we've been she's, crippled in and she's a nine. She's back in the national team fold as well. She was called up uh, for this upcoming friendlies against China. Andy Sullivan and Ashley Sanchez were not called up. Uh, Kingsbury and Rodman were uh, something mm-hmm. to follow. There is apparently uh, we're seeing we're seeing the we're seeing some options being exercised as to as to the national team pool out there. So new coach, Ms. you're going to look at new players. I think that's or like give more time yeah. and to evaluate it's, new players. It's, it's a little surprising. There's some big names that were left off on that roster. So that's something that you've never really seen from the U.S. women's team. They've never really they've always kind of ridden the same roster. You know, they, they've got a lot of these players under contract a lot of big names. And I think it's led to some times where they have stagnated there. I mean, we always talk about like this team's been dominant for, for years Uh, for a while there, they were, they like would make it to the knockout stages and bow out of the world cups. They in 2003 and 2007 specifically, they did not. And 2003 was in the United States as well uh, due to the, it was 2007. No, it was 2003, 2003 was, was in the United States as well. Um, It was going to be in China, but then there was the COVID and everything. So then they had it in the U S or not COVID. SARS was the was the virus at the time. <laughs> Other anyway, SARS. New First SARS. SARS. But, SARS you know, they, I feel like they've always been a team that sort of held on to those players and they're going to ride them to the end. And they did that, I think, a little bit, you know, in uh, I thought there were players like Ashley Sanchez should have gotten some minutes and got nothing in this game. So I think we're seeing we're seeing maybe the team realize that, hey, we can't really do that right now. We got to give some looks and, and we got to maybe try to build something new. So something to watch. Something to watch for the U.S. women's team. Starting left back, Gabby Carl also gets a call up for Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's good for her against Australia. That's just a friendly. And Riley Tanner, the uh, gives another call up for Panama. She plays for Panama nonstop and does not play for the Spirit. I have a friend who's a huge, the biggest Riley Tanner fan that exists. Uh, she's Panamanian, so I mean uh, that's that's why. <laughs> uh, but good for her. That's that's another uh, the, getting those minutes is good, particularly when you're not getting them here at the club level. And I know that you covered this in the Friday show for those folks who were not uh, Patreons. <laughs> you should be patreon.com slash Rocky Refugees. Uh, a couple of players were let go uh, and classified as free agents. So the players that have been let go, Ines Jarina, uh, back to France, most likely, Maddie Elwell and Nicole Douglas. Nicole Douglas, a recent draftee who did not uh, figure too much, but was a favorite of Mark Parsons, I believe, from prior. From prior. And Maddie Elwell, just didn't really get the time, uh, mm-hmm. didn't really get minutes, even in a, on a roster that was, you know, in the last two years beset by injuries, beset by call-ups, having Challenge Cup, just didn't really factor. I think she played a lot more two years ago in the also horrible year of 2022. Uh, but so the, that's going on. Now there are a bunch of free agents, and why you need to take this with a grain of salt is because if you sign a free agent, you have to protect them. So as all these teams are waiting to get picked over, by the expansion clubs, Bay FC and Utah Royals in one's expansion draft mid December, December 15th. Thank you. I'm a calendar man right now. Um, so you basically, these players are not going to get signed. They're just going to be sitting here. Clubs will probably speak to them and figure out where they're going to go, but no one will get no one. Unless they think that there's a player that they will lose and they will throw a player off of their nine, uh, to keep. I don't think there's any player on the spirit that counts for that. So, Players that are on that list, I'm trying to remember. This is from my brain. Amber Brooks, um, Cam Bogalski is a restricted free agent. Marissa Shiva is a restricted free agent. Mm-hmm. Nicole Barnhart's a free agent. Uh, who else? Who else? Is Tara McKeown a free agent? Or is she? No. No, I don't think so. She's on the roster. Uh, who else? Do you have the list? Are you pulling that up by any chance? I'm, I'm trying to. I can go pull it up. I know that um, uh, Amber Brooks. Tori Huster. Was... Tori Huster is a free agent. Unrestricted free agent. Yes. Yep. Um, 
here we go. Let's pull it up. And I did this all on my Friday show, so you can see. Uh, we have a Nicole Barnhart, uh, Amber Brooks, Bailey Feist, and Tori Huster are unrestricted free agents. Bailey Begals- Feist is the one I forgot. Yeah, ba- Bogalski and Shiva are restricted fee- free agents. So uh, basically, I think you're looking at that list. I don't think Barnhart will have much interest. Amber Brooks might. Um, I think, And Bailey Feist, I'm sure, might. Uh, Tori Huster as well. I think I... I would say I would talk to her. I think she would deserve a, a potential role. I, I'm not sure what her what her status is, but she's been a long time, long, long time uh, Washington Spirit player. I would Longest love to time. see her. Yeah, I would love to see them work out some deal. If she still wants to play, come here. You still get to stay in D.C. We'll give you a, a decent contract, and we'll also pay you to be a coach as well. Yeah, and we'll help start that aspect if she wants it. I don't know if she does, but I would Amber love to Brooks see her on the inter- coaching staff. Amber Brooks is an interesting name. Uh, just from a standpoint of needing another a third center back or a fourth center back. Mm-hmm. The name that I have seen cycle around uh, for a free agent that should come to D.C. is Tegan McGrady, mm-hmm. who did not play much uh, in Portland this last year. I think it'd Chris. be great to bring her bring her back, put her right back, uh, and then and then move um, – like, why can't I not remember her name? Our right back, who used to play center back, or used to play center defensive midfielder. <sighs> Unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. <laughs> Give me a second, folks. It's late uh, on it's the late, East Coast, and, and we are off our uh, we're off our game. We haven't been uh, we haven't been here very long. Dorian Bailey is that what you're Dorian thinking? Bailey? Yes. Who uh, I, I there have been challenges providing cover or a secondary backup for Andy Sullivan for three years. Every year we've been covering this team. It was uh, players get injured, players get brought in and aren't able to do anything. Uh, so. I think that if she's able to move back to her natural position, even though she did well right back and Tegan McGrady comes back in and is fit and can play, I think that'd be great. There's a lot of folks that are big fans of hers. Uh, wow. So if you go to the, never mind. I would say if you go to the roster page, they still have everyone uh, on the, <laughs> everyone on there, but the, they have to, they can only protect nine and under 18 players are exempt and everybody else you have to pick and players mm-hmm. that are long-term injury, you don't have to pick. So if you look at this roster, uh, it is hard. Uh, it's hard to keep Paige Mateer if you want to keep nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to keep Bailey Feist. Well, you don't. Uh, you know, you're not going to there. Uh, uh, Uli Matasar is a potential hard one to keep. Patel is a hard one to keep. So it'll uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do this. Particular again, no coach, uh, mm-hmm. still still coachless. This is the uh, this is the uh, the GM show in uh, in in Washington for now. So. Yeah, and that's and no real news or rumors or interviews or anything going on there. I'm wondering. I think we said it. Mark Corian's going to do all of it. He's, gonna, he's just going to add another hat. Yeah, I guess so. He he's talking about how he doesn't want to be a coach. He's like he was asked about whether he would take the coaching role. I think early when um, first press conference. Yeah, and he was like, "Nope, I'm I'm done with that. I'm just going to be the GM." Uh, Chris Dunn, also another name I would love to see return to DC. Sure. Uh, she's an unrestricted free agent, I believe. Can she play as a nine? Yeah, she can absolutely. Yeah, she was a she was a Golden Boot winner. She's she's moved right back. I think out of the amount of talent that was on that U.S. team. Um, I know and- she played. A, I know she's had a four as forward experience. I didn't know if she was more of a winger or a part of a two two forward system. No, yeah, she's definitely been an attacker. She was excellent, excellent in that uh, sort of the before twenty before before times. Uh, she made an excellent uh, where the spirit made an excellent run to the. To the championship game when she was an attacker. There you go. That makes Hatch more expendable. In my, in my view, if you could figure, if you could convince her to come back here and, and pay her what she needs to be paid and play her forward. I don't know. I think we'll see Hatch. I think we'll see Hatch stay here. I don't want Hatch gone. To be yeah. clear, not advocating for that. But if she no. wants to go, there's ways you can make it worth your while. Some, some excellent, excellent social media content she does with her with yeah, her husband. No it's fantastic. <laughs> All right, folks, I think that's going to do it. Uh, so I think we actually held a little bit to to our briefness of our show. Uh, we actually we did, did a good it. job. We did a good job. We did it, folks. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks uh, to talk more. I'm sure we'll have contract deadline discussion to talk about. Maybe we'll have a coach. Maybe we'll, we'll have a coach to talk about. So maybe. Thank you guys so, so much for listening. We'll catch you guys uh, in a couple weeks. Vamos. Vamos. Vamos.